Luke Groman here, CEO and founder of FFTT, Force for the Trees. For those of you who may not know me and are catching this on a replay, I'm a macroeconomic research consultant for both institutions as well as individual investors offering unique and contrarian research and just thought I would highlight or conduct my first uh, periscope here. So hit me up in the chat box, let me know if you can hear me, where, where you're uh, checking in from. Um, and uh, uh, just thought it'd be a good time to kind of check in. And uh, as I'm getting ready to head up to the Macro Voices Live conference uh, this Friday in Toronto, let me know if you're going to be up that way. Uh, would love to uh, um, would love to uh, see if you're going there. Uh, but I thought I'd come on here for maybe five, ten minutes, say hello, uh, take any questions that may pop up, and highlight just two quick things that have really caught my attention over this weekend. Um, uh, and I would start with the first uh, being uh, that uh, I continue to read uh, the headlines and, and pundits watch the news lines, uh, news stories, excuse me, um, and I remain and continue to be surprised um, at the level of complacency uh, regarding uh, where uh, Chinese and U.S. trade tensions stand today and where they could ultimately, you know, whether they'll get worse or not. You know, Graham Allison, who wrote the book Thucydides' Trap, uh, had a great quote last week where his case was that tensions between the United States are likely to get worse before they get worse, and I think that's probably uh, the most concise uh, and uh, unfortunately accurate um, explanation or, or, or uh, summary of that I've seen. And uh, the, the underlying reason for that is ultimately that it to our eyes, based on our research, it seems to be a matter of national security for China uh, not to give in, and it seems to be a matter of national security for the U.S. not to give in. And so you sort of have two tectonic plates pushing against each other, and to our eyes, um, the, 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 the tremendous forces pushing against each other are uh, being interpreted as a lack of volatility, a lack of risk, and we're not so sure that's the case. And we think there's a real chance you get one of those, or one of those plates to quote unquote slip as we move into uh, the back half of this year and, and uh, into early next year. The other thing that really grabbed my attention um, uh, over the weekend and, and late last week is um, we saw the Iranian real uh, falling dramatically against the dollar as we near sanctions fully going into place against Iran. Um, I think it hit 100,000 to the dollar uh, late last week. And, and it was interesting. Uh, we've seen this movie before. It brought to mind a period of time in the second half of 2014 uh, when you uh, uh, saw the ruble falling sharply against the dollar, and then again in second half 15 when you had the uh, the Kazakh tangi uh, depeg from and then fall sharply against the dollar. The point is this. Both of those nations, in those cases, oil production costs uh, were substantially denominated in those local currencies, and so as their production, as, as their local currencies fell against their dollar, uh, uh, effectively the oil production costs fell against the dollar. And so something we've not seen talked about much at this point uh, has been, um, but which we, which we think is really important is, is to the extent the Iranian real has fallen significantly in, against the dollar and continues to do so, that really reduces the margin of error in energy markets in terms of uh, the U.S.'s ability to get that oil off the market. In other words, if that oil, if any of that oil stays on the market, if they aren't able to sanction Iranian oil completely off export markets later this year, um, that all else equal is a negative for oil prices and something to be mindful of and something that has caught our attention uh, in, uh, in, in recent days. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Let me know if you guys are out there and if, if uh, you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, ask and I'll be happy to address them uh, for a couple of minutes. Let me see, we've got, oh, first question's from Bill Powers. Hey, Bill, how are you? Uh, asking, what do you think the chances are uh, of an accelerating China devaluation and raging inflation in China? Um, to me, 
I think, um, I would tell you, I think that um, with what's going on with the current account deficit in China, that they ran a current account deficit in the first quarter, there was some special situation uh, um, uh, in terms of seasonality, etc. with that. Uh, however, uh, there was commentary last week by Holger, uh, Holger Chapitz, uh, he was citing Deutsche Bank research, noting that there's a real chance uh, China could have its first uh, current account deficit in the first half of this year in total for the first time in over 20 years. Uh, to me, um, that really starts putting a lot of pressure in terms of forcing China to do something sooner rather than later um, uh, in terms of uh, taking an action, putting downward pressure on the yuan, um, potentially accelerating the rate at which they are uh, trying to de-dollarize commodity markets. So. Um, it's something it's something definitely watching um, in terms of uh, next question why do, why do I think that markets have not taken the trade wars seriously I think it's um, uh, I, I, I think it's um, you know one of these things where there's just not really uh, any signals uh, to the markets in terms of the financial asset prices you know volatility and indices remain low spreads on bonds remain low stocks remain near the high they've, they've not uh, uh, at or near the highs, and, and, and while it's been a narrower market than it has been, I just think people are waiting to see financial asset prices uh, dictate that, and I, they may be more of a lagging indicator in this case, just given the political nature of what uh, of these trade talks. So it's it's something we're definitely watching closely, um, but uh, uh, that to me is probably why you uh, you know it's not going to be a problem until it's a problem, I guess, kind of a thing. Good morning from Sydney, Australia as well. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> Good to see you. I'm glad uh, glad you checked in. Uh, I hope it's as nice there as it is here right now. It's uh, August in Cleveland, which is uh, pretty nice. So um, we'll uh, we'll enjoy it because it's not going to be so nice. I won't be doing these outside, uh, you know, in another couple months. Uh, question here uh, from uh, uh, T, uh, T at TGW Tom um, is uh, Tom. Great to have you here. Is, is gold the play despite the obviousness of shorts and sentiment? Ultimately, you know things we have said in the past in our research. Ultimately, think that that gold could very well be the credit default swap. Uh, of this uh, uh, cycle, and by that I mean um, uh, in terms of, of significant and relatively short, uh, significant uh, returns in a relatively short period of time. That said, another thing we have tweeted about before that I think is is relevant uh, for, for for the gold markets is it, there's a similarity between the gold markets now and the credit default swap markets back in, call it the 2005, 2006 time frame. If you've seen the movie or read the book, The Big Short, there's this great series, sequence of, of, of scenes in, in, in the book and movie where uh, Michael Burry can't figure out why he owns these credit default swaps, these instruments that should um, hedge or should rise in price as home prices fall, as the value of mortgage bonds, uh, subprime mortgage bonds fall. Uh, yet subprime mortgage delinquencies are rising, home prices were falling, and the value of these credit default swaps were also falling. It didn't make any sense to him. And uh, the issue was that the credit default swap market was not a real market. Uh, it was controlled by a limited number of uh, investment banks, and they were on the wrong side, or they were off sides in that market. And so they simply wouldn't price the books properly uh, until they were on sides. And uh, uh, without getting uh, too far into it, there is a lot of um, uh, the preponderance of the evidence suggests that the gold market probably hasn't been a real uh, a market since at least early 2013, and there's a number of different reasons uh, why that's the case. But ultimately, um, while you can separate paper and physical fundamentals for an extended period of time, given the very high stock-to-flow ratio of gold, uh, you can't do it forever. You've continued to see physical flows, particularly since 2013, ramp up meaningfully, generally speaking, flowing from west to east. And uh, so that is something we continue to watch. And uh, like I said, think that uh, uh, ultimately uh, uh, having, some, uh, having some gold is a good thing. Uh, any comment on the new Saudi? This is from Stephen. Good question. Any comment on the new Saudi threats and diplomatic breakdown against China? Um, <laughs> Or excuse me, against Canada, not even, not China, Canada. You know, I was just reading a little bit about that on Twitter before we got here. Um, uh, it's interesting. The the um, it, to me, it, it 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 is if 
probably the best, the mo my, my initial takeaway, first blush, having just looked into it, is just simply the um, the delicateness with which um, you have to interact in in uh, um, in, in uh, global uh, diplomacy. Um, obviously, there were. Um, comments made by the Canadian government in terms of condemning uh, some sort of uh, uh, social uh, um, protest or something in Saudi, and the, and the Saudi government took exception to that. So it's, uh, um, you know, it's unfortunate. It'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. But that was uh, my first blush was it just to me, it speaks to maybe uh, symptomatic of the delicate nature of, 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 you know, geopolitical relations broadly these days. Uh, let's see. I have a, 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 a question here. Impossible Bitcoin. Uh, great to have you on. Question is, do you see China devaluing below seven? Seven was a level PBOC went out of the way to say was never breached. Um, you know, to us, you know, it's a great question. Um, the, uh, the way we're thinking about it is, is with what's happened with the current account where it is, you know, it may have run into deficit in the first half of the year. That is really reducing the wiggle room for China significantly. And, and in some of our more um, uh, at length uh, research, um, to us, it really appears like China's wiggle. This puts them between, you know, we tweeted on Thursday or Friday, this puts China between a rock and a hard place. Um, they are trying to internationalize Yuan, um, and, and so they suddenly. Um, uh, have to consider managing this currency not just for their own domestic needs, but also um, uh, so uh, uh, um, uh, their own domestic needs. So externally, um, they have to manage this currency as well if they really want to internationalize the yuan. And so you get into this competing interest um, uh, dynamic that is uh, arguably somewhat new for them. Um, and so I don't mean to be uh, um, uh, I don't mean to be uh, uh, wishy-washy on the uh, the answer, but uh, to me the fact that they need to manage both externally uh, and try to, uh, uh, to 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 really setting back the. Uh, um, uh, the, the internationalization of the yuan and trying to de-dollarize uh, commodity markets, gain the ability to print yuan for oil and certain other commodities, while also uh, you know accomplishing domestic um, ec uh, needs, if you will, uh, to me uh, suggests perhaps other other avenues they may try to uh, uh, um, uh, pursue uh, in regards to what, what they do with the yuan, but uh, clearly the uh, the current account deficit. Um, there's a lot of pundits talking about China wanting to, needing to play the long game. Uh, this current account situation would, uh, to us, the biggest takeaway is, is I don't think the, 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 the long game is increasingly not really an option, which might be the most important takeaway. Uh, looks like we're you're you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Do you see the drone threat, uh, TGW Tom? Do I see the drone threat? Um, uh, so, uh, I did see the the Venezuelan stuff. Really, no comment on that. Um, uh, um, let's see. Any other questions out there? Oh, do I see the drone threat is spreading? Um, you would think so. Um, that's really not an area of expertise. Gotcha. Um, clearly, um, that is a uh, the first time we've seen something like that in regards to world leader. Um, uh, like I said, it's unfortunate. I would expect that you know people in a variety of different security agencies uh, probably were already thinking about that kind of stuff. But um, I uh, am not. I'm not the right person to comment on in terms of. Uh, um, implications of that, uh, at least at this point, uh, um, you know, going forward. All right, guys. Oh, there we go. How do I see current? Okay, a couple more questions. This is from Hello 1989. How do you see current monetary policy ending? Obviously, it feels crazy. Um, you know, to to. Um, uh, I, I think ultimately uh, what we are living through is a um, 
something we haven't seen in, in 80 years, not since the 30s, which is a global sovereign debt bubble or global sovereign debt crisis. And ultimately, uh, right now, central banks are trying to, you know, broadly speaking, led by the Fed, uh, pull back from liquidity uh, or that they'd been, you know, the, the QT process. Um, so far, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gone fine. Ultimately, the way I think this movie ends is central banks are forced to um, uh, seed control over the quantity of money in order to control its price. In other words, uh, I think the BOJ yield curve control uh, playbook probably spreads uh, elsewhere. Uh, and ultimately, this is a you know a metric we have been watching for some time. As a metric of this is the S and P 500 uh, over the TLT that has been increasing uh, for a number of years. Uh, we ultimately think that continues to go higher. Um, you know, over the full course of this cycle, not necessarily near term. Uh, and the question from Stephen, what do I say to the people who say that the Shanghai uh, oil contract is a non-event? Uh, you know, I think the, um, I, I think that the Shanghai contract is, uh, for early days, I think it's done a lot better than people have thought. I, the at this point, it seems like it is. Uh, you've had some big, you know, you, you've had reports of some big uh, um, uh, international traders trading it. Uh, it. There has been a lot of evidence that it's been a heavily retail contract in China. Uh, but I think ultimately, where the rubber's going to meet the road is um, next month is a first physical delivery month, and that is where things will start to get, I think, a lot more interesting. And I think we're going to learn a lot more about the validity of this contract. Uh, if this starts pulling physical volumes from the Brent contract in particular, um, then things may start to get a little bit more interesting in, uh, in, in global energy markets, and by extension, global FX markets, global debt markets, uh, global equity markets. But let's watch and see what physical volume's done to date. Uh, I think the volumes speak for themselves, even if they are uh, more uh, retail denominated. Um, look, it's a contract that, you know, Ole Hansen at, at uh, Saxo Bank had a great chart over the weekend uh, that highlighted, look, it's got an 11% share after uh, 17 weeks. That's, I think, a lot more than what anyone would have thought, even if it is uh, more retail denominated. Uh, let's see, IG uh, from Tom, uh, who has the higher put, Powell, Trump, or Xi? <laughs> um, you know, a preponderance of the evidence would suggest Trump. Uh, anytime the market's down 500, he starts he starts tweeting away, and he certainly has got the direct access to the market. So I guess if I had to pick one, I would say Trump. Uh, mentioned the gold market is manipulated from almost British. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't. It's it's anytime you say the gold market is manipulated, you 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 um, you get into very uh, um, dangerous ground. Uh, uh, what I would say is um, having a cash, the way I would phrase it is having a cash settled futures market on a monetary asset. And by monetary asset, I mean the stock to flow ratio of gold is over 60. By contrast, stock to flow ratio of oil is 1.2, 1.3. In other words, a higher stock, the higher the stock to flow ratio, the further you can separate physical fundamentals from the futures price and, and the longer you can separate it for. And what that tells you is uh, gold's, uh, uh, you know, you can't separate oil physical uh, fundamentals from the paper market for very long because the stock to flow ratio is so low. You can't store oil somewhere. Um, the difference is, is gold can be moved around. It can be rehypothecated. It's not used for anything. It's a monetary asset. And so uh, the way I would phrase it is, is not necessarily that gold is manipulated. I would say that when you have a, a monetary asset with a high stock to flow ratio that has uh, high, you know, cash settled futures with no lever, uh, virtually effectively no leverage to li limit to leverage, uh, what you end up, what end up, what ends up setting the price in the futures market is the guy with the biggest balance sheet. It's basically like going to Vegas when you play, uh, um, if you were to play no limits poker with a billionaire and and you're, you know, something much less than a billionaire doesn't matter how good your cards are uh the billionaire is always going to win because he can always push the pot so hopefully that helps uh you would think you could block the gps uh let's see uh, da, 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 da. oh well good we got a couple of trolls here we'll just block those guys uh let's see uh luke does gold have much downside physical being taken away paper caving um Hard, hard to, this is a question from Doug, 
I think I think there's I think there's you know it's been interesting watching what's been happening with with Chinese yuan and gold. Uh, that's something we've highlighted on Twitter a number of times. There was an article on Bloomberg two years ago highlighting uh, a Goldman report noting that the lower the yuan went at that time, the more physical gold the Chinese bought. And and uh, to us, there is some method to that madness in terms of how um, uh, China's been structuring uh, their uh, their gold markets. Um, uh, and, and effectively, I mean, the P, uh, PBOC advisors have said we want to use gold to help internationalize the yuan. Um, you know, that said, uh, gold is is it's 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 not a real market and probably hasn't been a real market since at least early 2013. And so, I'm very reticent to say it can't it, you know it can't go any lower. Clearly, you know, it, it possibly could, but. Um, Ultimately, like I said, if, if we are in a cycle where, uh, as, as you know, our research would suggest that we are in, you know, effectively a sovereign, a global sovereign debt bubble, um, ultimately at some point uh, over the full course of that uh, cycle, uh, we would expect gold to do to do quite well. Yeah, impossible Bitcoin. Yes, cash settled equals detached from reality. Yeah, and cash settled, especially when you have a, um, you know, the stock to flow ratio. Again, if you've got a you know, oil, when oil is undersupplied, its stock to flow ratio is 1.1, 1.2. Uh, when it's when there's a lot of oil inventory when uh, or over inventories it's 1.3 uh, gold like I said 60 plus stock to flow ratio it's it's basically a good way to think about that is uh, playing three card monte right so if you have three shells and one p under one of them you know oils oil you're 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 looking for the p under between 1.1 and 1.3 shells in other words the physical fundamentals the p it, it's it's hard to hide. You, with with gold, if you've got a stock to flow ratio of 60, and you're playing with 60 shells, you got to look for 60 shells to find the 1P. Um, it's a different game entirely, and that's ultimately what we were saying. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, 1989. What is your view of a U.S. recession in the near term? Um, I think the uh, um, you know, I think the U.S. economy has been softening. Uh, I think it continues to soften. I don't think it's market at this point. Um, but I think uh, some of that depends on what rates continue to do, uh, what the dollar continue to do, continues to do, uh, and what U.S. equities continue to do. That trilemma we've talked about uh, publicly uh, on Macro Voices and, and what uh, we've tweeted about, uh, ultimately, um, if you get a higher dollar, higher rates, and equities – don't continue to move higher on, on low volatility, uh, that likely will continue to put um, negative uh, pressure all else equal in the U.S. economy. All right, guys, finishing up on 20 minutes here. So I'm actually going to jump. Um, uh, I've actually got to uh, get some dinner going for my uh, for my sons here. I appreciate you guys jumping on and, and being patient. Oh, how long before Powell stops raising rates? I'll, I'll do one last question here. Uh, from uh, 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 let's see, uh, GIO KD one. Uh, so um, that's a sixty-four thousand dollar question. <laughs> How long till power stops uh, stops raising rates? Um, we think that what's happening in the U.S. economy is going to force the Fed's hand uh, very uh, very shortly. And by that I mean um, the U.S. economy, um, like I said, is softening sequentially. Um, are these Fed hikes just Fed hikes, or or is this about uh, effectively defending the dollar? And uh, a, if 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 this is just a normal rate hike cycle, then Powell may be done raise either raising rates or maybe done shrinking the balance sheet at the pace he's done shrinking it at, maybe sooner than 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 markets currently think. Uh, however, if uh, if if they are uh, um, if they are not. Uh, um, uh, if, if they are raising rates to defend the dollar, uh, then all of a sudden, um, that's a different ball game, uh, and uh, uh, it might mean they're not nearly done uh, as soon as as the economic uh, situation would otherwise uh, would otherwise suggest. So, all right, guys. Hey, great catching up. I apologize for the air ball uh, on the comments section of the first one, and appreciate all your patience. Uh, look forward to uh, catching up with you on the next one. Have a great night, great week, and uh, we'll talk soon, guys. Take care.